Hello everybody, welcome to the second part of my well, overview of the PowerBook G4 12 inch. Here I want to show you the bundled applications. So how would it be if you just bought this machine today? Of course I did a few changes here. The disk is not called Macintosh HD anymore, that's how the seller sold it to me. Benchmark applications are installed. Default browser has been replaced. Safari is out and I'm using 104 Fox to security reasons. And of course I enable VNC because I think the capture quality is better than when I use the, my capture card. Also, when you come to your documents, for, to your hard drive folder actually, here there's an option to send your regist registration to Apple. I actually did that and it still works. More changes. I've installed Xcode for my own purposes and I've installed the classic environment. So you turn on this computer and what you're gonna do first? Well, see what's around. If you open the hard disk and go to applications, you're gonna see what's coming here. The address book application is just one more address book program. It populates automatically for registration information and your contacts. A very nice feature that I think stopped working in Leopard is the Bluetooth option. Here if you have a Bluetooth headphone, you can send SMS or start calls from your computer. I remember sending many, many SMSs with my old Nokia I think I had a 7650 and a 6600 and they worked perfectly fine. I could just come here, click, choose the contact of my friend and type SMS using the keyboard. Very handy. These would still be compatible with uh, call dev, I think, not sure. So you could have a server not sure how dev. Well, we'll, just, we'll see later. AppleScript. AppleScript is some is a macOS only scripting language that allows you to automate anything on the OS, the graphical interface and applications. Given, uh, of course, that the developer of the application gives you basic functionality to interact. It's very interesting and powerful, and I use it at work, for example, to test browser-based applications. So, for example, if you come here, you can see how it looks like. So, you see, this tells Application Finder to look for something based on what parameters you want, yeah? It's simple, easy to understand. The next one, it's Art Director's Toolkit. Let's see what it does. This is a very useful application. I actually should copy it to my G5. You can convert measures, color. Wow, for people working with arts, this is very useful, digital art. Very nice. Metric, please. Next, we have Automator. It's really sad that the autom Automator is now not an important part of the OS like it used to be before. This used to be one of the main features that Apple would advertise for macOS. And even recently, the head of automation and scripting for Apple left early, late 2016. So it's really not their priority anymore. What you can do here is automate applications again, based on the functionality that developer gives to you 
So you could, for example, take a bunch of finder items, for example, pictures, and then you could add them to a DVD slide show. And then afterwards, I don't know, maybe burn a disc or after, yeah, for example. So, and maybe that, that doesn't work like this, but you could come to the point where you throw the pictures in a folder and you get a DVD out of it. And if, if you are a person who deals with a lot of images, a lot of data and do repetitive actions, uh, that would be the way to go, yeah. And I actually still use Automator, it's very difficult, but I use it with compressor still in OS Sierra. The few times when I use Sierra to convert uh, video formats, to re-encode them. The calculator is just your normal macOS calculator. I don't think it has changed much. It has some functions here for conversion that I've never used. Wow, exchange rates still work. So if you convert here, I'm not sure what it is doing. Uh, oh, here I have to click here. I honestly don't know how it works, but I'm honestly surprised that the online service is still active. Maybe they use the same functionality on the current macOS and haven't changed the API. Pool. Why can't I quit? Uh, well, let's just kick it out. Chess. Chess is a legacy from next step and it hasn't changed much since then you can just play chess Pony and if your english is Pony good enough you can you you can even use a uh, voice commands to move the pieces and i've heard it works let's see if my test is not being affected by the by the VNC encoding video. What's the usage of processor? Aha, uh -huh. it uses only 5% of the CPU, 6%. So it really doesn't affect our performance. We can keep going like this. The next application here will be dashboard. Dashboard is a feature that I still use to this day. It's very practical. For example, you can make notes and quickly move data between applications when I don't know, you need to copy some text around, yeah? You can quickly convert unit, very handy, and uh, check the forecast. It works as it should. As you can see on the main monitor here, the performance is fluid, yeah? It's just a capture that's not the best. Another feature I really like in macOS is the dictionary. So if you look up for banana, you have a banana, yeah, description of a banana is, and the dictionary screensaver that comes with macOS is also very nice. I still use it uh, every day, and it's interesting, you go out for a quick break and you come back and you learn a new word. Very nice, especially for a non-native speaker like I am. I don't know why I'm quitting the applications like this. DVD player, I guess, plays DVDs. I'm not sure I have any DVD around to test, but I suppose it should just work. It's scriptable, old good times. And as far as I know, DVD player leverages the hardware acceleration of the graphics card, saving battery life. So in theory, if you have uh, a video that you encode in the same format as a DVD, MPEG for some layer or something, I don't remember now, um, if you play it straight from a file, your battery should last really long. This battery here only lasts for 10 minutes, so it's not a good test. With font book, 
you can explore your fonts that come with your system. It works again as it should. Very nice application designed for small screens. I wish application would still work well on small screens. The, the time, time goes, we have bigger and bigger screens and the applications just take the whole space. It's a pain. Let me just check how much time left I have for record. I still have nine minutes, so let's move on a little bit more. GarageBand is the classic killer app from Macintosh. Very easy way to do multi-track recordings. I'm going to explore this application better later on when I have my capture card connected. Not my capture card, my Firewire audio interface. But you can have multiple tracks recorded. Use a microphone to record basic effects, fade in, fade out probably, rehearsal metronome, counting it before record. You can tune your guitar with it. Uh, very nice. Graphic converter, it does what the name says. You can use it to convert between different formats of pictures. You need to have an image here before, before you do anything with it. But you open and then you can convert, do basic operations. And uh, it's not like Photoshop that you can select an area, have layers, but basic operations are supported and it should be well optimized for Mac and for the PowerPC processor in general, depending on when it was released. Mm. No date? Made in Germany? Mm. What is in here? Zlib, Photo CD, something for PowerPC. So it's a very old application actually. Going down a bit i call classic i call it hasn't changed much just takes more space on screen and no brush metal around i call nowadays also ha always shows the correct date on your calendar uh, took a while for apple to learn how to do it if you close it it goes back to the default very lame iChat is obsolete i think uh, maybe you still can do points to point video calls uh, but as far as I know, the four people in a video conference thing doesn't work anymore because it depends on Apple's service. We can try some all the time. I'm not going to set up an account now for that and I don't have a webcam to go with the PowerBook. iDVD is another very nice application that you can use to take your family videos and create a DVD out of it. So for example, if you drop in the drop zones here uh, images or videos, then they're gonna be animated and part of your DVD when you put uh, on your TV. No one watches so many videos, honestly, so I don't see what's the point of this. Then you have image capture. So if you want to copy images from your camera, digital camera, and you don't want to use iPhoto, just copy the files to your computer. And if the camera doesn't behave like a mass storage device, then use image capture to copy the pictures in. I can connect my phone here as a demonstration. Nah, I'm going to demonstrate everything later. iMovie HD. Good old iMovie still exists. We can make a magic iMovie. You can choose the format here with support to 1080i and 720p. But of course, a codec that the PowerBook can handle. Uh, 
Later on, we're gonna try to import a video and see how it behaves, but you should be able to just drag clips here and add transitions, photos, and send it to IDVD and create it directly. It uses, it uses a lighter codec, so the PowerBook should handle it very well. Um, but of course, new cameras use highly compressed H.264 or even maybe H.264, H, uh, Hyperfile or H.265. And then those will have problems that are gonna play very slowly. It should still encode in the end and convert, but they're gonna be choppy, playback will be choppy, effects choppy, exporting will be painfully slow. What do we have next? So the next folder is called installers. What's in it? Mm, FileMaker Pro is some macOS only database thing. And I'm not sure it's any interesting, but we can see what is in there. Okay, it's installed in the meantime, let's do something else. Next one. Mm. Internet Connect. This program is obsolete, doesn't exist in newer releases of macOS. Uh, when you open, it shows a summary of your connectivity to internet. So in the case here, I'm using airport connected to the network called DDWRT. In the old times, you'd have internal modem. Uh, you could use to connect to dial-up internet provider, enter the telephone number here, account name and password, and click connect. If dial-up internet would be something that you do often, you could click here to see the modem status here. Bluetooth. Well, many uh, cellular phone providers, they offer a number that you can dial to leverage the network, uh, their a APN, so for example, star 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 nine nine, pound pound, whatever. So you enter this information here, and then you use your 3G connection uh, if your uh, provider and phone support it. It's handy, and this Bluetooth should do four megabits per second, and it's enough for basic internet browsing. Yeah? In many places, three megabits per second, or four. I don't remember now. Uh, but it's enough for internet browsing. Yeah? In airport, you can see airport status, signal strength, and you can turn off the wireless card. Very basic. When you click VPN, then you can also configure VPN connection to your workplace or home. Hopefully no one is using PPTP anymore. Let's see the FileMaker thing. Mm, looks like a database, and that's what it should be. Creating the expense reports template here. And that reminds me Microsoft Access with prettier forms. Thankfully, also well optimized for small screens. Um, so if you have a bigger screen, you, you can fit more things in there. Um, well, someone very organized could get interested and track their own mileage here and be better with their own budget. I'm not sure I would ever be competent enough to track down my car mileage and this kind of thing. And also, I'm a big fan of text files because you can move them around and they are never obsolete. And if one day people stop making this application, then you are screwed with a bunch of data stuck in there. For example, here you are stuck, you are using leveraging their online services and this instant web publishing probably doesn't work anymore.
Oh, there's a minute next. Um, iPhoto is the classic iPhoto. Probably there are no, no photos here. Yeah, oh, good, there are no photos. So the person really cleaned the computer. And if you insert your camera, you can do basic operations on the photos. We're gonna try it later. I think this is another application I used a lot at the time when the computers were current. Uh, it used to work with all my Nokia phones and my Palm Tungsten P3. So it synchronized your address book and calendars all over, but not leveraging any cloud, just direct connectivity. So your data belongs really only to you. You would click sync devices here. I think would connect to them all and sync everything. So if nowadays the, it works like iCloud is your hub before your main computer, your Power Mac, your PowerBook was your personal data hub. And that's how Apple advertised that in the past. iTunes is iTunes. Probably looks the same. Mm. 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 Okay. Yeah. Looks the same with less bloat and not so big icons, very nice. Um, hmm. It still opens the page or not, probably obsolete. Yeah, probably this part doesn't work. This is iTunes 5. Ooh, that's old. Probably the iTunes in Leopard still work. Not really sure. We will try later. Enough of iTunes. I work. Classic I work. No numbers. So this is probably the first release. Apple is still charging for it. I used to like Pages a lot in the past. It was a very advanced uh, tool, almost like a desktop publishing app. But after I work 09, it was the less decent one, and then it kind of got worse. Uh, the alignment features, handling, all very nice, and this interface I always like the interface, it's easy to use, it doesn't eat all your screen, and uh, it, was, it is always easy to make quick changes, the results look good, really nice program. Keynote is, is the program that I always wished my employer to use. Uh, the presentation is always so beautiful with smooth animations and nice style. It always makes me think of that Al Gore movie about the environment. I forgot how it's called. Truth, something about truth. So you can write here, this is a PowerPoint presentation. Not. Mail, mail hasn't changed much. I configured here my Google account. You can send and receive messages. And it does the job. Test email, yes. However, I will go for webmail because I think the mail application doesn't support new, the newest security standards. That's something to be verified. Uh, in any case, you should keep such a machine and use it daily. I would go for Leopard. Well, my mail is here. 
or not. Get mail. Yes, my testing mail is here. Very good. Quick. Omni Giraffe. Is that an Adobe Illustrator kind of thing? Powerful diagramming and charting for Mac OS, probably. Let's see. Make a square. Yeah, it, it has guides to align it automatically, so you can make complex illustrations. I might use this for some of my diagrams later on, possibly. I'll give it a shot. If it runs on Leopard, why not? Oops, I should maybe group the objects. If the concept is sound, I can group them. Arrange. Group. Yeah. All these programs work the same way. Yeah, works beautifully well. And I like the interface. How many outliner? Let me just check the time. I still have 15 minutes, so I doubt it has any updates, but let's try. With me. Uh, what is this supposed to do? idea organizer for Mac OS so that's something like probably the new version of Apple the notes application that now has features to attach pictures and make some special things that breaks compatibility with the old application the old versions probably was inspired by this if they didn't buy the company yeah? scripting support Good Apple application. Hmm. Yeah, I would do something like that, but I still stick myself to text files because I can port them around easily. And if I would start using this, I'll be stuck with it forever. Preview, good old classic preview. Works as it should, does everything. Uh, easy to make notes, easy to copy and, and annotate picture files and PDFs. You know the thing, hasn't changed any, anyhow. QuickTime Player. This is more the classic QuickTime Player that was discontinued with uh, OS Snow Leopard. So if you have a carryover from old installation, you can still use it. But new application, it doesn't come with new Macs. It, it's not well multi-threaded, it's quite slow for new codecs, but it has some nice features for quick trimming and cropping audio and video files and exporting. Quite surprised the home streaming uh, screen still works. I think everything that gives Apple money still works. So that will be the QuickTime home screen. iTunes matches a new thing. This computer is 10 years or more younger than the PowerBook. Enough of QuickTime, goodbye. Apple has configured the website badly. I'm curious, let's see where do we get. Probably the trailer page is not so used, so they never updated the search to cover strailers.apple.com. Let's see what's in there. Trailers! Looks like when you open trailers on the Apple TV. Do you think this computer will open anything? That would be quite impressive, actually. I used to open this web page, trailers.apple.com, so much in the past. Can I play the trailer? I'm not 
not sure it is actually loading or doing anything. Let's see. Nah, it's not loading. Enough of this. Safari, I'm gonna skip. Sherlock doesn't work anymore. It used to be a very nice search tool before everything was turned to um, web apps. So you could look in uh, eBay, maybe even encyclopedias. and get the results in the app without having to open a browser. I miss those times, to be honest. Yeah, nothing here anymore, sadly. Goodbye. Stickies. Well, this is it. This was not in macOS when it was released. People rebelled and then Apple included it. It's very useful and something I still use, although I'm not sure the newer release of macOS still have it. I use more the dashboard one and I might have to go back to the stickies, the normal one, once Apple removes dashboard from macOS. System preferences look the same, just the icons are now bigger. Processor tab here is part of developer tools. You can disable cache to see the performance. Uh, configuration, etc. Cool that you can disable the cache. I think on Leopard you cannot. But since this computer has only one processor and one core, you cannot do anything with it. Text edit also hasn't seen any improvement or any changes. Looks the same, does the same. Consistency is good. I like it. The utilities also have remained the same. Airport is still there, activity mode is there, audio media setup is there. Not sure about Bluetooth Fire Exchange, probably yes, Color Sync, yes. So I quite like Apple's consistency in this aspect. So yeah. If you at home when you take a new computer, old computer, and for People who have difficulties with computers, this consistency is very good to learn. Like my grandpa uh, used to have a lot of problems with Windows changing all the time, but now he deals with his computer without any assistance and the computer is doing fine. Then for Fox, the browser, FileMaker Pro. So that was a quick overview of the apps that come with the PowerBook G4 running Tiger and that's what the out-of-the-box experience would actually be and in the next video I'm going to show you how fast daily operations are. So thanks for watching.